Hi everyone, so this video is my long overdue cacti and succulent updates. This one will be specifically for my seedlings. So over the summer I had a thrips outbreak, not only on my orchids, but also on my cacti seedlings, which really sucked. And in the process of trying to eradicate the thrips, I did end up losing a few seedlings. So if you don't see them here, it's dead. The worst one was my Pseudoripsalis amazonica. I already had issues getting germination on those seeds. I had one survivor and in the process of removing the thrips, I, had, I used a oil, oil soapy solution or I guess homemade horticultural oil that completely destroyed the seedling. So it's pretty, it was pretty disappointing that that happened. I do plan on getting more seeds, but not right now. So, so far, my other seedlings, which I'll show later, seem to be fine. And these two, just recently I noticed, had problems. So these ones are isolated. And this one is my Astrophytum myriostigma. And you can see the skin is quite blemished. It was fine before, but I just noticed it had a problem. So that's why it's separated. Oh, I should mention for these two, I changed up the oil solution. For my orchids, I usually use uh, water, baby oil, and soap, and then I add some alcohol just so it dries up faster. But for this one, I used neem oil instead and no alcohol. So hopefully that will help. From what I understand, neem oil also destroys the reproductive activity of insects. So I'm hoping it'll be a good long-term solution. And this one is Lophophora freakii. Um, you can sort of tell that it had a spider mite issue as well because the skin is also quite damaged but this morning I found one thrip so right away I moved this to the side as well. And this one is Mammillaria pectinifera and you can see on the side there's another plant that's growing. I don't know if it's surviving or not so that's new. This was the first seedling I noticed that something was wrong. This was growing quite well and it was very green skin. I noticed that the plants seem to be like shrinking a little bit and you can see the skin is very scarred. You can also see some black spots on that one there. So that way I knew something was really wrong. So this one was heavily sprayed for several weeks and I do believe it's fine now, so I've put it back in the tank. This one is Rebutia pygmea. This one also had a thrips problem. I mostly noticed the juveniles on this plant, so this one was also heavily sprayed, but it seems okay now. One issue I'm having is that it looks very leggy, especially this part. Uh, the reason this part's even more leggy is because when I isolated it, it didn't have any like proper light. So that's a problem. I'm not sure what to do to uh, resolve this issue though. I guess I could put it closer to the light, but and I am concerned about burning the plant. This one is Astrophytum caput medusae. This one also had thrips. Also noticed mostly the nymphs on this one. I was really worried because the last time I grew these from seed, they all died. And I really didn't want to lose these ones, but these are fine. There's a little bit of an issue on those two at the top, but the rest of the plants are fine. The good news is... It's at the stage now where it's starting to grow, I don't know, are they called stems or tubercles? It's growing a new uh, thingy on the side, at least these two plants for sure. So yeah, these are doing very well for me in spite of this thrips problem, so I'm very happy. Um, this one is Mammillaria lenta, and this was actually doing very well until I noticed that it started to kind of turn kind of orangey-brown the tips there. Um, that's when I realized it started to develop a problem. Could have been spider mites, but I suspect it's also thrips just because it was everywhere. So it's been sprayed down. It's hard to tell because of all the spines, but I think this is okay. I'm debating whether I should repot this into a, a proper pot. Right now this cup has no holes at the bottom. So when I need to water, I just kind of fill it up and make sure the soil is saturated. But it seems okay. Uh, so we'll see how this turns out. And this one is Ariocarpus cochobianus, variation albiflorus. And this one also had a thrips problem, which really worried me because I didn't want to lose this plant either. I didn't want to lose any of my plants, but there's certain ones where you just really, really don't want to lose them. 
Anyway, this one was treated and it's totally clear now, which is great. In terms of growth, it's grown very well for me. Each of the plants has several tubercles now, so it's really great. I think out of all the Areocarpus, this is one of the faster growing ones and you can see that it's grown quite a bit for me. I'm very happy with the progress so far. And this one is my Lithips Varicolosa Rose of Texas. Uh, this one also had a thrips problem and I honestly thought it wasn't going to survive. At one point it was a little bit squishy, but it turns out it was just dehydrated. So when I watered it, it plumped up. So it's, they're nice and firm now. Uh, this one was growing sideways, so I just propped it up. Um, so I have two survivors, and you can see on the skin there the evidence of an infestation, but it's okay now, so that's good. This one is Lobivia bonnier. I didn't notice any thrips, adults, or juveniles, but you can see at the bottom there's some kind of orangey scarring. So just as a precaution, I also sprayed this one down. In the process, I did lose a couple seedlings. I think also this one has to go, it's not well. But overall, the rest of the plants are fine. This one is Blasfeldia lilliputana, and this plant was completely clean. It's doing fine, it's grown a little bit. I don't know if you can tell, but the plant is right there. It's very hard to see, it's very, very small, but it's doing well for me. This one is Feralia asteroides. It's done quite well for me. No signs of infestations from what I can tell. This one is Sulco rubicia cristae. I've only had two survivors of all the seeds that I planted. This one also has no signs of infestation. This one's kind of skinny, and this one actually pushed out a little pup for me. That's such a small size. I think the pup's a little dehydrated though, but the body of the actual seedling seems to be fine, although it's still small. This one is Conophytum uviform. From what I remember, I had a lot of seedlings actually, but they all since died and I only have one survivor left. At one point I actually thought this wasn't alive because it was covered in a dried skin, but it's actually alive so that's good. So both of these are Submaticana Kelliantha and they're doing well overall. Uh, this one seems to be a little bit leggy, but otherwise it's fine. These ones did not have a thrips problem. These are Stenocactus pentacanthus and it's doing well. Also no, no signs of thrips. And these are Areocarpus. Uh, the one on the left is Furfuraceous and the three on the right are Fisheratus. These ones did not have any signs of thrips or any other infestations, so they're doing okay, slow growing. This one is Lophophora williamsii. This one did not have any thrips. It did have some spider mite issues, you can tell from the scarred skin, but otherwise it's fine. At one point, it tried to grow a pup on the side there, but it hasn't really matured or gone any bigger. Yeah, this one seems to be doing fine. And last but not least is my Astrophyta mysterious Akabana. These are doing fine. Slow to grow compared to the Myriostigma, but these are alive and well otherwise. No thrips or other signs of pests. Alrighty, that's my video for today. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye!